Hey everyone, it's Jonathan here, founder of Driving Academy, and in today's video, we're going to be going over the 2024 predictions for the trucking industry as a whole. Get ready because 2024 is going to change the world. It's going to change the trucking industry in general. And once we look into this crystal ball right over here, rub this head for good luck right over here. Let's see if my predictions are right, wrong, if you believe me or not, and we shall see. You want to wait all the way to the end of the video because we're going to be talking about the actual trucking market as a whole. Are people going to be making more money in trucking by the 2024, less money, or is everything going to just get taken over by AI and self-driving trucks? Let's get right into it. So we're going to be breaking down these predictions in a few different sections. The first section that we're going to be talking about that a lot of people like is going to be technology. Now, trucking and technology is going to be something that has been happening for a few years now and it's something that scares a good amount of people and for right reason. If trucks all of a sudden start driving themselves, does that mean getting a license is completely worthless? Is 2024 going to be the year where trucks actually start driving themselves? And what's actually happening with technology in general? So let's get the fear out of your head right now. Trucks will not be driving themselves in 2024. When you actually look at the market as a whole, done a few a little bit of research on it and knowing um, when it comes to the investment side of it a lot of investors have actually pulled their money away from the self-driving car and self-driving truck industry for a few different reasons and we're going to talk about those reasons right now one of the biggest issues with self-driving trucks is not necessarily the technology even though it is a very big hurdle to actually do because computers can't really see like our eyes can see right and they are getting better and better but depending on what part of the country that they're in depending on the weather situation it's going to make it much more difficult to actually create self-driving trucks in general that being said the other biggest hurdle that a lot of investors are worried about is going to be the actual governmental side of it so we all have this favorite uncle uncle sam and uncle sam likes to make rules and a lot of people who work for uncle sam are called politicians that being said a politician's job is to actually make sure that they keep their job and the way to keep the job is to keep the people happy so they can vote for them again the numbers are simple anywhere from three to four million people are employed by the trucking industry in general which means three to four million votes that's a whole lot of voting power in the actual overall population when you look at airplanes, airplanes have been able to fly themselves for the past, like, what, 20 years or so? And you might be thinking, well, airplanes actually don't fly themselves. They just kind of glide, but the pilots have to land and take off. Well, that is completely incorrect. All the pilot really has to do, if he wanted to, is press a button, say auto land, auto take off, and set the dials on where he wants the plane to go, and the plane's gonna pretty much do everything. The pilot's just there to monitor all the controls and everything. I know this, I took pilot classes and I got a few friends who are pilots as well and they tell me all these things as well so that being said if for 20 years the airplanes have been flying themselves but by law you still need a pilot that means that you will actually need a truck driver when it comes to driving a truck it just makes sense but that's not the only technology we're going to be talking about in 2024 there's been a big increase in safety technology that will continue to increase for 2024 as well so different safety technology for trucks is kind of like what you've seen in cars for a few years now. Kind of like the uh, self-guiding lane change type of thing. They're gonna not going to let you change your lanes. They're going to make sure that you're aware once you get into the, the sides of the lanes. Auto collision, making sure that you're stopping uh, before any type of collision actually happens. So the trucks are going to start getting smarter and smarter to reduce the risk of actual accidents, which eventually, once that really picks up, insurance costs should start dropping. I have a buddy of mine who actually does a lot of work for the U.S. Postal Service. And because they're a big entity, one of their contract stipulations is that the trucks that are actually working the route have to actually have a certain number of safety features on there, which is all technology based. Now, the last thing in technology we're going to be talking about is our buddy over here, Elon Musk. Elon Musk has created this truck, I'm sure you've seen, and you might be saying, hey, are trucks going electric? Is Tesla going to be creating electric trucks all over the place? Are all the trucks going to go electric? And in 2024, my prediction is you'll see a lot more electrified trucks out there but it's not gonna be a main staple at all. Elon Musk truck, I haven't seen it myself yet. He promises big things, but a lot of other trucking companies out there like Freightliner and Peterbilt and all those other guys, they're gonna start experimenting with electric trucks. The biggest difference is the amount of weight that these trucks carry and the actual distance that electricity can actually provide for them. So I was at a truck show and I saw a brand new Freightliner box truck, uh, fully electrified. And the problem was that 
the actual range on these trucks. I think it was like 400 miles or something like that. And when you're doing local deliveries, a stop and go, stop and go, or depending on the weather, that 400 miles can actually reduce very quickly. Uh, and also the other problem with batteries is that they weigh a whole lot. And in trucking, weight is super valuable because the more your truck weighs, the less you can actually carry. Because trucks have a limit of 80,000 pounds that they can actually carry no matter what road that they're on. So the heavier you make the trucks itself, the, the less of a load that you can carry, which means less money eventually that you're going to make because you can transport less products. So there's a nice balance there. Now technology will continue to get better over this. You'll have longer range batteries created where you can actually drive longer uh, in the same amount of time without a charge. You'll actually have lighter batteries created over time, which will not affect how much weight that you can actually carry in your load. Uh, but the other thing that you do have to understand is to charge all these trucks becomes an infrastructure issue. So think about it. all these trucks get parked in a, tr in a truck parking spot or in a truck stop itself and they all have gas stations. So they just fill up with diesel, takes them 10, 20, 30 minutes max and then they get moving. Now in order to actually get all these trucks charged up they're gonna have to be sitting for a few hours throughout the night when they're not going anywhere and the electrical grid can't simply handle all of this currently at this stage which means there's gonna be a huge push for infrastructure to actually make this in any type of reality. Now in my parents household there's three Teslas there. My dad has a Tesla, my mom has a Tesla, my brother even has a Tesla. He comes over and he brags about it all the time where he he comes over, he plugs into the Tesla, uh, into my parents' uh, house or whatever it was, and then he says he gets a free charge. That's his version of the gas station, right? Me personally, I like the gas, I like the diesel, I just like the convenience of it because when you have all of those extra things, you're actually going to need to start planning in your day, okay, oh man, I forgot to charge the car. That's happened to my family sometimes where now they had to borrow my gas car to actually get to where they wanted to go because they forgot to charge the Tesla overnight and it's going to take hours for them to charge. So imagine that on a scale of trucks and that's going to make it a whole lot more difficult there. So overall technology, self-driving trucks is not coming in 2024. I think we have 10 to 15 years before that actually comes. Safety technology will continue to increase in 2024. And then uh, my prediction is you actually will start seeing electric trucks on the road for 2024, but it's going to be more of a novelty idea versus anything else. So that ra wraps up technology. Let's talk about the next thing, which is going to be supply chain. So when it comes to the supply chain, everybody has heard about this term, especially during COVID, and there's been a big issue when it comes to, hey, I can't get things from point A to point B because when you think about it, uh, there's a few different steps how everything is made. Even this shirt, the zipper, every little thing on this thing itself had to go through its own supply chain. So I have a buddy who actually owns a shipping company out in the West Coast, and they're usually the first indicators of how the economy is going to start going. Because when the U.S. starts purchasing a lot of stuff from outside of the, of the U.S. and we start consuming things in the U.S., that's a great indication that the economy is going to start to pick up. So before the whole economy kind of slowed down happened, they were telling me about six months to eight months before, yeah, things are actually starting to slow down here for us. We're actually having a slower year than we did before. And we didn't see it for another six months in the actual overall economy. After having a conversation with them about a month or so ago, they're actually saying that they're starting to pick back up again and the inventory levels are starting to go up as well. So there's a few things moving them closer in that direction. One, shipping costs. So shipping costs went through the roof when this whole supply chain issue happened because you have limited supply and everybody wants the same exact demand. That being said, shipping costs are starting to go back to normal now that things are kind of stabilized. So that is helping people out. And the main reason why supply chain actually got uh, hurt was because the country shut down and most of the world shut down for a period of time. So just think about it if you're a factory owner, right, and you want to make clocks, as an example. You're going to have the glass, you're going to have the plastic, you're going to have the metal components or whatever. If it takes you usually two weeks uh, to make put in an order and get your metal components from overseas, uh, from shipping, and all of a sudden everything shuts down and now your two weeks turned into 16 weeks, now all of a sudden instead of just ordering a two week supply, you're going to order a 16 week supply because it's going to take you that much longer to actually go. Which means now you're purchasing more, the factory that's creating it is creating more, and now all this product has to go through the same shipping lanes that was going on before and the same trucking lanes, so all this stuff got backed up at the ports. And now once you created everything, 
it actually slowed down every all the retail side and all the end customer side so they their inventory started to shrink down so they said hey we can't keep waiting for this stuff so we're just going to keep ordering more and then for a time period there everybody was just getting fat on their inventory which means everyone was stocking up on toilet paper if you guys remember when you guys don't really need that much toilet paper now imagine that scenario across every single product across every single company now of course everyone's going to be purchasing more the stock the stock of your inventory is going to go through the roof and now we're in a phase where we have been in this past like year year and a half phase where all these inventories are super high they're not ordering any new stuff anymore because they still have a lot of the old stuff and now it's starting to get back to a normal range inventory where now they're going to start ordering things again at a normal pace so i'm not going to say it's going to go back to this craziness that we had during that whole covid where everybody had free money and people were buying all this toilet paper but things are going to stabilize more and you're going to start seeing an uptick in actual economy and drive that being said when it comes to the supply chain it's gonna make sure that things are moving forward in the right direction in a positive direction that's my prediction for 2024 when it comes to the supply chain now let's talk about driver shortage my buddies my pals right now things are kind of slow for some people for us and for all of our students they are better than ever right we help our students get their cdl license no matter what time of season it is we all help them find a job none of our students really have any issue finding work with us and they're able to make more money than they were before before having a cdl license which is a great thing to have because right now even in the slow times as some people call it there's still an 80,000 driver shortage that being said, 80,000 drivers is still a lot of jobs out there, which means we have the connections to help you get jobs. But when the supply chain goes through the roof and things get uh, busier there, that means companies are going to need to hire more drivers, which means the driver shortage is going to go through the roof. And when companies need drivers, again, supply and demand. There's limited amount of drivers, and all these companies want to hire more drivers to expand, to make more money. So they're going to offer incentives to drivers to actually join their company versus their competitors. So that means higher pay, higher bonus, uh, tuition reimbursement bonuses, making sure that they have the right uh, benefit packages available to persuade people to come on in for their company. Because without you, they are not able to grow. And those are all the cool things to really think about when it comes to the driver well-being. So 2024, you're going to start seeing an uptick in actual driver responses and making sure that a lot of companies out there are looking for company drivers and they're going to try to motivate you like crazy to work for them versus their competitors because they want to take advantage of this entire growth that is happening in the marketplace itself. And finally, let's talk about the actual trucking market as a whole. So we talked about technology, we talked about the actual supply chain, we talked about driver well-being, and now let's talk about the economy. So where has the economy been for trucking in general in 2023? For a lot of people looking outside, looking in, or maybe from the inside when they're too close, they say that 2023 was not the best year for trucking. And usually what I, I would agree with them. For a portion of 2023, the rates did drop through the floor uh, because they started dropping down. Again, too much, so not enough supply. Like we talked about in the supply chain issue, if everybody has inventory stocked up, there's very little need to move inventory around, which means a lot less work out there. And all of a sudden, uh, uh, too many people looking for the same amount of work, all of a sudden the price does start to drop. As the supply chain kicks up again, things are going to move into the right direction and things are going to go back to normal. But now, uh, towards the end of 2023, we already see prices starting to stabilize and rates starting to get back to normal for pre-COVID numbers which means the only guys having an issue now are the people who have too high of expenses, which means they purchased their truck too high, which means their insurance is too high, maybe they don't have the experience that they needed on the insurance side, and they're trying to get things going with all the rates and all the expenses higher than what they were before. We saw truck prices go through the roof during COVID in the, in the past couple of years. We're starting to see motivated sellers come back onto the market, start selling off their trucks at reasonable rates. You can actually get some pretty good deals now if you find the right uh, seller that's motivated out there and you can actually get started in this industry for a little bit cheaper as long as you have experience and you have some cash to deal with if you're going to be going through financing or anything like that i've seen trucking companies want at least 60 percent down on a truck for a brand new driver especially if it's your first truck getting into the industry itself super high risk for some of those guys so make sure you're you're aware of that but the trucking industry as a whole if my predictions are correct then the 
all of a sudden we're buying more things from overseas, the supply chain uh, needs increase, driver shortage is gonna go up. That means that there's gonna be a big demand for people like you who want to get into the industry itself. In 2024, people are gonna make more money than they did in trucking than in 2023. Now, those are my predictions. I looked at the crystal ball earlier today. Like I said, I rubbed my head for good luck, and I think that I'm correct. Of course, no one can tell the future, but in 12 months, you can actually make a video replying to me here and saying, hey, you were right about this, you were wrong about that, or just put in the comments below. Am I, am I full of shit? Do I know what I'm talking about? Do I not know what I'm talking about? I'd love to know exactly what your point of view actually is with this. But my point of view, if it is correct, 2024 is going to be much better than 2023 in trucking. And if you want to take advantage of that wave of goodness that's coming your way, getting a CDL license might be the smartest thing you can do for you and for your family's future for now and moving forward. So in order to get a CDL license, what you should do is actually go to the best truck driving school in the whole country. Now, I wish I knew which one was the best truck driving school in the whole country. Wait a minute. There's a logo. It just popped up there. Driving Academy, we have locations that are planning to be opened up in 2024 nationwide. We're probably going to be opening up one in uh, Portland, Oregon next year, Tallahassee, Florida, maybe even Gary, Indiana. All these places are in the works for actually opening up. So we're expanding in 2024 because we know how good it's going to be. And we actually have a few cool things in the work on the back end to make it as easy as possible for you to get your CDL license with as little risk as needed. We have what we call guaranteed training courses where that means that we're going to get you all the training that you need and it comes with unlimited tries at the road test. So if you fail the first time, you keep going for the second, third, fourth, fifth until you pass at no extra cost to you. All you need to get started, my friends, is $500 down and we can work on a payment plan for the rest. And then we also offer lifetime job placement. And we're open up seven days a week. So that means you can keep your full-time job, come to school on a part-time basis, and take advantage of the 2024 predictions. I hope that this definitely gave you value today, and I hope that you're able to see into the future. And like I said, comment below. Let me know if I'm full of shit or if I know what I'm talking about. Thanks, and I'll see you soon. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, make sure you hit that like button. Also, subscribe to our channel. It's really gonna help us out. Click on that button. And if you wanna continue yourself on your road to freedom, Here's more videos to watch. There's endless amounts. Hopefully we get to see each other one day very soon. Thanks.